and welcome to the third in this series of seven Ignite Talks. I'm Andre Archuk, and joining me live in the studio here in the Catholic SG Radio studio is Father Adrian Yeo. Father Adrian is parish priest of the Church of uh, Holy Family, and he's also the associate judge of the Ecclesiastical Tribunal of the Archdiocese. Father, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. You're most welcome. <laughs> okay, Father. Um, I'm just uh, going to address our listeners for a little while. Uh, just a reminder, if uh, you want to get in on the talk and uh, share with us your thoughts, please do. All right. If you're joining us on YouTube or on Facebook, feel free to leave a comment there. Otherwise, go to our WhatsApp uh, uh, platform and you can dial us at 6895-1515. That number, 6895 one five one five and we'll feature as many of your comments as possible uh and uh, we want you to say as much as you'd like as well father before we start can you lead us in a prayer please okay we pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. god our only father we thank you for this day we thank you for the church and us celebrating 200 years of the Catholic Church's presence here in Singapore. As we go on today in this session, we ask you to be with us, enlightening, uh, enlightening us and opening our minds and our hearts to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Now, before we get into uh, the conversation about whether we as church are still impactful and relevant today, we want to take a short trip down memory lane, so to speak, and we have this four-minute video, and it might seem familiar to you. This clip contains extracts from our Catholic Light video, which was produced in 2015 for the SG50, mm -hmm. uh, and it will feature some of the key works that our early church missionaries did in Singapore, especially in the fields of education, uh, healthcare and social mission. Let's have a look at that. More so than the light that led to the building of physical churches was the light that sparked in the hearts of the people. After building the first church, Father Burrell was convinced that the church needed to provide education, especially for the poor. The missionaries had a great insight. They realized the value of education. Father Burrell felt that we needed an English mission school because the rest of the Portuguese Catholics were sending their children to Protestant schools. He tried at all within his means to get the brothers here and it wasn't easy. He wrote many times to Rome and to the Brother Superior General and he was not one to sit back and just wait for replies. So that's why he went back again to Europe to make sure that he would travel with the brothers and the sisters and come down to Singapore. Six brothers and four IG sisters on the ship, the large one. Three months on a ship is not easy. In fact, there was a story of one of the sisters. She died uh, two weeks before they reached Singapore. Very soon after arrival, the first thing they did was to open schools. It wasn't to propagate the faith, but it was to see how they could make society better by providing education. In the first years, SGI at Braspasa, at that time, SGI was known as St. John's Free School because education was to be provided free. SGI was started in 1852 by the LaSalle brothers. It was situated diagonally opposite the cathedral, where the current Singapore Arts Museum occupies. For the IJ sisters, Father Burrell forked out his own money to pay for a piece of land across the cathedral to build them a convent. With the second batch, we had Mother McTeel, and she had the inspiration to start the education for girls. Within 10 days, she started already gathering the poor girls and the school began. When this place was really dilapidated, they had a house over there, not like that now. There was no door. They had to use an umbrella for privacy. Two pots, two pans and things like that. Very hard times, but they persevered and went on. That's why it's the courage 
daring spirit that touched me. So it was from these two lights that many more Catholic schools came to be built. These lights came from stars like the Good Shepherd Sisters, the Maris Brothers, the Gabrielite Brothers, as well as the Canossian Sisters. The Catholic Church would be the single biggest uh, contributor of education in society. In the 1940s, while many Singaporeans lived in the darkness of the slums, suffering from diseases like tuberculosis and leprosy, the expulsion of Catholic missionaries in China found a need for their service in Singapore. The bishops in China said to the sisters, no, we don't want you, you have to go. Because he was trying to protect them. He didn't know what the communists were going to do. And so they were invited to come down specifically to look after the tuberculosis patients of Tan Tok Seng because no one wanted to do that job. Mother Angela, Sister Camillus, and Sister Baptista. They were the first three. A lot of nurses wouldn't want to work in TB hospitals because they're afraid of uh, being contagious. I have actually worked in the tuberculosis place, but we never think that we all oh, mustn't touch this, mustn't... No, we act normally. They did such a fantastic job that they were also given care of the leprosy patients. They started out serving so well again that the government said, could you start training girls to do this job? They were the first ones who started this training centre for nurses. In 1961, the sisters built the first Catholic hospital in Singapore, Mount Alvernia Hospital. Over the years, many different religious orders, such as the Little Sisters of the Poor and the Brothers of Mercy, came and attended to the disadvantaged of society. Light begets light. In the 1950s, many Catholics were encouraged to reach out to the poor and needy. This saw the formation of the Catholic Welfare Services, the St. Vincent de Paul Society, Young Christian Students Movement, and other Catholic action groups. In the 1950s and 60s, there were many poor in Singapore living in the kampongs and slums. The Vincentians took up the call and they walked the track roads to the kampongs to make home visits to serve the poor. In order to address the charity needs of our people, Catholic Welfare Services was set up. The need to bring social services to the people led to homes like St. Vincent's home, St. Teresa's home, as well as Catholic Welfare and Social Service Centres to be the new lights of society that reached out to all. The church is here to serve everyone, not only the Catholics. We want to make Singapore a better place. We want individuals to be cared for, to be respected. Father, every time I look at that video, it always brings goosebumps. <laughs> but it also always brings questions, you know. The missionaries, those who came here early, they had hardly anything with them. Yeah. Some fell sick themselves, some even died. And yet, they went out to serve the people. I know the church is still called to serve, right? Yes. Um, but in today's society, the way life has changed, is the church still relevant and as impactful as it should be in society? Well, you know, the old missionaries that came here, they came because they wanted to make a difference. Mm. And they were trying to follow what Jesus called us to do, especially in the gospel. You know, Jesus calls us to be salt of the earth, light of the world. So, you know, maybe I would like to read Matthew's sure. gospel. And this is what Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Your light must shine in the sight of men so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. 
And so the old missionaries came, and as I said, they wanted to make a difference. And really, in the early history of Singapore, they made a huge difference. Yeah. You know, they started healthcare in Singapore when there was there were no nurses, there were no hospitals. Indeed, the FMDM sisters came and they started up SGH and yeah. and they did all this. Then you got the the teaching congregations that came, the LaSalle brothers, the oh, IJ right. sisters, they came to do, to build schools and to educate us. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us benefited, you know, Absolutely. from <laughs> even, you know, as we, we were talking earlier, you know, the prime minister has also benefited from a Catholic yes. education. Yes. And so, these and you know there are other things the other social work that the early missionaries came and and set up and the early missionaries were really the salt of the earth light of the world for us here and many people would have seen and would have experienced the difference that they make in our lives right. and that is why many became christians as well yeah. Yeah. And so, yes, the church is impactful, not only in the past, the church is also impactful now. Right. But there are challenges. Oh, there are challenges. <laughs> <laughs> if there is no challenge, then it's not life. Correct. Correct. But if we, okay, let's so let look at it. So when, when the missionaries came, there was actually nothing. Mm -hmm. Singapore really had nothing. Nothing. But now we have so much. Yes. And is that a malady in itself because we have so much? Is there space for Christ and his church in our lives today? Because we already seem to have so much. We seem to have a lot. But, you know, we cannot go through life putting on blinkers. Mm. You know, if you know what blinkers are, yeah. you know what you put on the horses so that they don't stray. Absolutely. We, we cannot have this tunnel vision and we may be economically prosperous. We see Singaporeans, you know, having a, a very affluent life but there are people who are down and out. Yeah. There are people who, who are not as prosperous as us. Right. And so we say the church is impactful in the sense that, you know, there are people who go out and help this group of people. For instance, the Vincent de Paul. Mm. And then if you, if you, if you know, the Catholic Welfare Services, yes. there's a group that goes out at night to help the rough sleepers. Yes, yes. And, you know, to, I've been to, with them on they, one of those nights and the work that they do is just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's scary as well to know that there are people with no homes and they're sleeping in corners of buildings with cardboard boxes. People don't even realize, I think, that in Singapore, we still have people sleeping on cardboard boxes. Yes. And not only that, you know, like uh, the Commission for Migrants. Yes. And they are, uh, they are doing a, a whole lot of things, you know, helping them go through their life here and improving themselves, mm. improving them, so that when they go back, they can make something of their lives. Sure. And, you know, giving, teaching them skills and all that. And, and yeah, the church is impactful now. We, we run, not only run hospitals and schools and, and all that, but there are all these social works. And it is through these social works that the church makes a difference in the lives or makes a difference in society. Right. 
and really you know in all these those who 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 are involved in in, in these actions and all that they truly become salt of the earth light of the world you know but what is more important is not just this big organizations right what is more important is us catholics christians making a difference in people's lives i think it's how we want to respond isn't it yes it's how we should respond as a disciple you know the old days when i guess when we were growing up a good catholic is what one who goes to church yeah gets the sacraments that's right uh, and okay maybe you pray and you belong to a ministry that's right you get involved you contribute to the church but that is not what that's not all a christian should be yeah. only yeah you know in vatican 2 it tells us we need to be christ like and so you know our whole life now calls us or what we should be looking at yeah. is that we should be disciples we should be responding to god the, the thing is how many people understand what discipleship is or being discipled you know in the faith and living that discipleship out in the world today as we are called to how many understand that not many some do you know but being a disciple is really not just merely doing things yeah but it is it calls for a whole lifestyle you know Uh, that means you you have to really change your whole life right. and it, it calls firstly uh, uh, for a christian a catholic to have a good good prayer life you need to be praying yeah and when we say praying it, it is not just merely your rosaries Absolutely. or your divine mercies or, or all that It's not just rattling off a whole lot of prayers, isn't it? It's important. <laughs> it is. Yeah. But it's not just that. It is having a relationship with God. It is it's not just only meditation also, you know. Sure. It is sitting down and trying to to listen not just with the ears but with the heart what God is calling you to. And you know, God calls us to various things and at various times of our lives we got various response different response so you know maybe someone if if you are responding can start off with with legion of mary and then end up with being st vincent de paul or something else but you are responding to god what god is calling you to right and so you know you pray and you see where god is leading you to and a disciple is responding to this call of god what yeah where god is leading you and what god is asking of you to do now how to make use of your gifts and talents a lot of people sometimes think uh, you know they expect a voice to be telling them you know <laughs> <laughs> just like uh you know if they they think or oh, you if you want to be a priest uh, god has got to tell you uh and you have mm. to be able to hear his voice um i mean maybe in vocation in the call uh to spiritual uh, cl- the clerical life religious life possibly maybe but for the day to day catholic i guess he or she is not going to be having visions all the time But what is it that they should be looking at then so that they are moved either by Christ or the spirit to move out of themselves because a lot of us are also very we feel we're inadequate you know 
we we worry. There's also a little bit of it is also about self, you know. I, I'm not worthy. Yeah, you know, I'm not worthy. Also, I pay sila, you know. I don't want to. But it's these things. So how do we overcome these things? This this inertia. Well, I think sometimes we just have to say to respond yes to God mm. and just have faith it, right? and trust and move. You know, the God tells the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah said, "You know, I'm a young man. I." I have no gift of speech. I don't have anything. But God said, I will assist you. Yeah. And so, Jeremiah puts faith and trust in God and he just went and just did. And and I think that is also for us. You know, like for me, if you ask me why I became a priest, I would rather hide and, mm. and not talk. Right. But God calls, and so you respond. And for and you, then, that must have been uh, also a change. You had to go through a, a sort of a, not a metamorphosis, so to speak, but there was a, a, a spiritual change from within. You, I don't see it as a spiritual change, but you just have to extend yourself, ah, and you just okay. push yourself. So I think that's the word, isn't it? Uh-huh. You've got to extend yourself. Yeah. Right. And many of us are afraid of extending ourselves. Mm-hmm. Again, because sometimes we're afraid of getting hurt. We are afraid of getting hurt. We are afraid that we don't have the time. Mm. But if you ask those who have given themselves, any lay person who has really given themselves, they would say, all of a sudden I have time. <laughs> Somehow God has given me time to do what I need to do. Mm. God has given me the gift. You know, I, I thought I don't have the gift, <laughs> you know. Like for me, as I said earlier, I, I think I'm. I tell people I'm a stupid fuller. <laughs> I, I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, but God gives. Yes. God will be there if he you qualifies. just. He qualifies. Yeah. So you just have to have faith, and take that step. I I, I like to give this uh, image of Peter. Mm. And the Lord, you know, the Lord was walking on water, and Peter saw him. Yeah. And then Peter said, hey, "Call me out, you know, to you if it's you." And the Lord calls. And then when Peter put faith, he took mm. that step. Yes. It's only when he doubted that yeah. he sank. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that faith? So faith is actually taking that step into the unknown. And responding to God is taking that step into the unknown and going on an adventure with God. Mm. And God will bring you to places where you don't expect. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Do you think that there are Catholics who are in the marketplace and are, you know, because when you're in the marketplace, you are besought by things of the world. Um, But someone who is really in touch with the faith and with the Lord knows that he or she needs to walk a certain path. Yes. I think it's becoming more difficult in today's context of the way we are living life. It's so fast, it's competitive. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you you know, sometimes don't step on people, so to speak, you're not going to get ahead. It's all these things, you know. But how can people still live out their faith in the marketplace and without, you know, going and doing things that are, well, not being salt of the world, still have a chance to live up fully their Christian lives? Well, in the marketplace, especially in the marketplace, that's where you got to be the light of the world. 
that's where your values, your conscience have to come into play. Yeah. And you show an alternative way. I like that. Because that is then responding to God. That is then living out your faith. And with that, you, you, you know, by doing little things, you know, the church is impactful not in, in big things, you know. I, I like to tell people, we are all not called to be Mother Teresa or John Paul II. <laughs> but we are all called to be the little flower, Teresa of Yes. The little the the little flower. flower. Yes, the little flower. The little flower became the patroness of the missions, missions, not leaving the convent, but doing little little things: right. sewing, picking up the litter, sweeping up. And it is all these little things that we do. And so you know, if we do little things in the marketplace, thinking of. Say, for instance, you know, we, we like to ostracize people and you befriending. Mm. That, that is then living out your faith. There is someone that I know of, you know, in the past would have, she says, you know, in, in her life, every day I must do one good thing to somebody. Wow. I make a conscious effort to do just one good thing. In my busy life, I'm busy, I got many, many things. Right. And I just do one good deed to someone and I've made the difference. Now, that's important, right? Because it's being intentional. Yes. It's being intentional and I think Many of us sometimes can go through the day, can go through the week, the months, the years, without being intentional in the way we extend ourselves to, to even our own relationships with our own loved ones as well. It starts with the family, actually, at home. So sometimes I tell people, you know, you need to bite your tongue until it bleeds. <laughs> so that's intentional, you know. Not saying something that you want to say. <laughs> Mine's almost sewn up. <laughs> so, you know, that is the, the, the good thing that you do. Well, that's true. Because then you don't start a quarrel. You don't start a fight. Not that you, 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 you don't deal with it, but at the moment yeah. when there's anger, when there's, you know, the heat of the argument, that's where you keep quiet. Absolutely. But this, like I say, it's all the little, little things. You know, even, it's like I say, in the marketplace and all that, and we don't, we don't do big, big things. You know, there are, there are examples in Singapore that, that people have done little things. Yeah. We, we, we will know Sister Gerard. Yes, very well. The little thing that she do, just go and visit the prisoners. Absolutely. And that's it. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Yi Peng Liang, Mr. Charity himself. Yes. It is all this, they do little things that make in the lives of people. And actually, talking about that, now the Holy Father's Fratelli Tutti. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's come uh, at, at such a an amazing time because also during this pandemic, a lot of people, I think, um, sort of wanted to look at protecting themselves first. Yes. Protecting their families. And I mean, it's not abnormal. Nope. But it's now with the spirit of Christ looking outwards and saying, how now with these resources that I have as well? Am I able to reach out and to be the salt, the salt of, the of the earth, earth and the light, light of, of the, the world? To understand Fratelli Tutti, we have to understand a little bit of Pope Francis. And in his mind, what is important is this missionary church. And that's why, you know, you have to 
to work with the migrants, with with everybody. Right. And the missionary church is a church that is sort of the earth, light of the world. And that's where we go and be Christ to our world. And that's what Pope Francis is asking us. And if you really see all his other documents, you know, that's the main trust. Yeah. And that's why he tells priests also, you know, you need to smell the sheep. The sheep. That's right. <laughs> so it is, you are missionary. Yeah. The church is missionary. That's why the church is the triage of the world. Yeah. I mean, he calls the church, he accounts the church to be a hospital. Mm. Right. So if we are missionary, if we are supposed to go out and we are supposed to make a difference. So we need to make that difference in our world. And also, we have to have this also at the back of our minds. When we make a difference in our world, what we are called to is to live out what Jesus has taught us. Mm. And that is to love one another. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. I like, and I like one of the, these paragraphs from Fratelli Tutti, paragraph 106, which is social friendship and universal fraternity necessarily call for an acknowledgement of the worth of every human person always and everywhere. Yes. Many a time, actually, it's easy for us to forget the worth of the other person. Because either we want to get ahead of him uh, at the traffic lights or, you know. <laughs> when we zoom through life, when we rush through life, mm. People don't matter. Yeah. Sadly. And so sometimes we need to slow down and we need to treat people as people. Yeah. We forget that. We forget. And so again, it goes back to this sort of the earth, light of the world, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Are there three things, maybe, Father, that could help us maybe anchor um, and give us direction, maybe, uh, in, in, in ensuring that each of us um, could be on the, on, the, on the journey with uh, certain skills, so to speak, so that our Christian life is is one that is, first of all, uh, knowing myself because of my spiritual self, and then from there, extending myself towards my brother and sister. Three things. <laughs> well, you have said, and I think what is important is to know self. You need to know who you are. You need to know your gifts and your talents. And once you know who you are and your gifts and talents, then you bring all this, and you need prayer. Right. Because you're going to bring this all to prayer. Yeah. And bringing this to prayer, you see where God leads you. Right. So you, you got Two, knowing self, prayer. And then the third thing would be the courage to do. And to look for a community, I suppose. Or to work it within the community. To step out of yourself. The community is there to support. Of course, then you need the community to support you in, 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 in all that you do. Right. So the community that you choose is the community, is a community of like-minded people. Right. I mean, it's like you said. You know, sometimes people move on from the legion to the you know, Paul, Paul or, or whatever, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and 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 I think that that those organizations also help support you both in your spiritual life and as well as the social action that the the work that you're going to do. Correct. So. Yeah, so you need a community that is able to help you in that way. And the community is not just only helping you 
to be a disciple, mm. but you also help the community ah. to be a community of faith. Absolutely, because you are you are a gift as well. You are a gift to them as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it's never a two. I mean, it's always a two way. It's always a two way. Yeah. Okay. So if you just joined us, welcome to the third in the series of the Seven Ignite Talks. And today uh, I'm having a great uh, session <laughs> with uh, Father Adrian Yeo. Uh, Father Adrian is parish priest of the Church of the Holy Family. He's also associate judge of the Ecclesiastical Tribunal of the Archdiocese. Father, time now to look at some questions that are coming in, and I think uh, they're coming in pretty fast. So, um, you ready for some of these? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, from Alicia, uh, Felicia, I beg your pardon, who uh, sent in on WhatsApp, she says, Why is salt used as a representation for our roles as Christians? Why salt? Uh, why salt? <laughs> Nowadays, we speak about umami. <laughs> okay. Salt will give flavor to your food. Absolutely. You know, salt will bring out things. It makes a difference in mm. your food. Without, food. without salt, your food will be bland. Sure. And so, the, the image that Jesus gave as salt is this that you make a difference that salt makes a difference in the in the food you will also make a difference in the lives of others when we are called to be salt right okay Felicia actually it's almost as simple as that but yet <laughs> there's still so much about the element okay from I guess this would be from Andre from, uh, from uh, I think he left his uh, comments on YouTube he asks, what more should we do in our church's social outreach to address the social problems we are facing now? What more? What more? Well, what haven't we done yet? Be, yeah, what haven't we been doing yet? The church has been doing so much. Mm. I guess every, every ministry that deals with the social issues of today have to every now and then stop and reflect and see the needs of society and whether these needs are met or not. If you, if you just keep doing, sometimes what you, you are doing becomes irrelevant. Right. So you need to stop. You need to reflect. So what more can we do is, is to reflect and to see. And what do we need to respond to? As what we are going to need to respond to now, I, I, I can't give, give you this answer. Sure. But it is, you know, those who deals with dealing with the social aspects of the church, uh, for the church has to stop and think. And I, I guess it, it, it gives the church also the opportunity to reinvent itself yes. in a way. If we sit down and reflect, uh, to sometimes it's not necessarily doing something new, but doing the same things better. Yes. Right? So, I mean, in, in that sense, I, I guess if there's growth in that, area, in that sense, yeah. then, then, then it's good. Okay, Andre, we didn't exactly, uh, we couldn't exactly give you, but it, it's tough. But uh, we, I hope you, you sort of understand where, where we're coming from, right? So mm -hmm. it gives, gives the church an opportunity to sit down, to reflect, as Father mentioned. And, and I guess, I suppose, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic also has made the church uh, sit back also and, yes. and, and look at how we can use technology now, actually, Right. Yes. <laughs> Which we were talking earlier. Yes. That you know, churches. Some churches now have all these uh, live streaming masses and all, and it is because, I guess, the the priests of the parish would have stopped and say, okay, now how can I respond to the need of my people? Absolutely. To be in touch and and, and yeah. to still, you know, be with them, yeah. so to speak. Okay, James. Uh, 
has offered this question, Father. Father Adrian, he says, I feel like the church is not vocal enough about certain social issues, such as the abolishment of the death penalty and delegalizing abortions. What's your take on this? Well, these issues are quite uh, sensitive. And I guess we should always bring forward what the church teaches, you know, what the magisterium has told us. And we, we have to always bring this forward to our, to our sphere, to our society. And we should use the various influence that we have to make this known. But again, we also have to realize we have to balance things because we live in a secular society yeah. and a multiracial society. Correct. And so we cannot just push our way through. But what we should be doing is to be the voice of conscience mm. in our society. Right. You know, it's not going out to the streets to demonstrate or to, sure. but in our own teachings and in, in the way we, we bring forward things. Correct. And when there is an opportunity to speak about it, yeah. then we speak about it. I think very often, you know, well-meaning people want to put, a, a, you know, forward a, a certain agenda, mm -hmm. which could be good, but sometimes you're right. It, it, it's how it is brought to the fore and how it is expressed um, or communicated for that matter. That's, that's truly really important. It's very important because we can shout and at the end of the day, nobody listens to, to us shouting. Yeah. But if we sit down and dialogue with people, mm -hmm. with our society and give the truths, yeah. that will help. Right. And you know, you conscientize people about the ills of, of what they are doing. Absolutely. And they come to a decision on their own. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Fiona from WhatsApp, she says, with reference to the video that was shown earlier, mm -hmm. what exactly is our impact with regard to schools, healthcare and social mission today? Can we do more? Hmm. <laughs> healthcare, we have one hospital and we have various nursing homes, right. nursing care. We, we do our best and I guess, you know, the nursing care that we give is slightly different. Mm. You know, the hospital that we have, Mount Avernia, no doubt is just, is, is it, you know, it does all sorts. But what is important is there is this uh, pastoral care yeah. and the, the vibe there is so different. Yeah, I, 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 I can say that because I mean, I was watered there before and it's <laughs> just absolutely so different. It's the different. ethos is, yeah. you know, and, and as you said, the pastoral care, you can feel it, you know, it's it's palpable when, you, when mm -hmm. if, if, if you have to, unfortunately, be watered <laughs> in, in the place. Yeah, so I have, I, I, I too. Yeah. So the whole care there is so different. So in that sense, they, they make a difference there. Yeah. Even the nursing homes, mm. they, they make a difference. They, they are not there to make money right. outright, but the care that they give to, to those, that's the difference. Well, the schools, of course, we can do, we can try to do more, but again, we are, are quite limited, but the schools are doing the best they can within their limitations. Yeah. You know, okay, catechism and all that, but, and catechism, masses, but there are other things that they are doing. You know, there are some schools that they have the, what they are supposed to do some, uh, I think what they call, 
some charitable work. Ah, okay. yes. Okay. And, and all that. Yes. And, and so there is some difference, I guess. Right. Again, it's to, I suppose, conscientize the children. To conscientize the children to, to open their minds. Yeah. yeah. You know? Okay. All right. So, I mean, I think, I guess um, there is still so much that uh, some parents feel that, you know, Maybe there can be, as you said, more catechism, uh, more masters. You know. There is a difference. You know, the, the Catholic education, in what the church envisions Catholic education versus what we have, is something totally different. Mm. But the problem here is that our schools, we have to follow MOE's guidelines. The umbrella guidelines. Yeah, yes. yeah umbrella guidelines. But when we speak about Catholic education, we are talking about, you know, schools that are run by churches. Mm. And so you can have a totally different ethos there and, and a totally different outlook of things right. where God and faith can just come in at any, way, at any point. Right, right. You see, but we are limited with with MOE guidelines, and also we are also limited with manpower. That is also true. You know, you don't have, you, you can't, you don't have all the priests to go to all the schools. Yeah. You know, and not all priests can communicate with children. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we, there are limitations, but we, I guess the schools are doing the best they can within the limitations. Yeah. And I know, I have spoken to Catholic principals and and they are trying. Yeah, yeah. And many of them are actually, I think, are trying to be, um, I think, uh, being different in, in, in small ways, yeah. you know? It, not trying, as you said, to, to change things, but just bending things a little bit so mm -hmm. that the environment is, mm -hmm. is wholesome, and that the children are aware, yes, right, and that the faith will have some opportunity to yes. take hold. Take hold, yes. Yeah. Okay, Fiona, uh, she says with reference. Sorry. Uh, sorry, this is Y B from from YouTube. That's right. Uh, this person is asking, how do we as Catholics deal with our fellow Catholics? who behave with less than Christian charity <laughs> towards their fellow man? Okay. Be charitable. Be charitable. <laughs> well, the thing is, if we can be role models, if we can be, again, you know, we, we, it starts with us, myself. How am I light of the world, salt of the earth, to, to the others? Yeah. And that includes the lukewarm Catholic, or the Sunday Catholic, yeah. the one that is, you know, doesn't bother about anything. Right. How am I salt of the earth? And from there, my example, my life, how can I lead this person back yeah. to the fold? I think for, I mean, without really answering this, but I think very often it is how we respond, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it and, is. and the life that, uh, and the example that we ourselves show, if we want, if we expect somebody to be charitable, but that person may not be in the right frame of mind also. Uh, but if by my uh, response and by my, my words, um, hopefully that person is calmed down a little bit and, you know, <laughs> Uh, it's, the temperament has changed a little bit. Yeah. But I think also it's with members of our family as well, isn't it? It's to everybody. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. And again, and we were talking earlier on about being in the marketplace, which is so competitive. Uh, and, and I think actually really a lot of people struggle. Uh, you, you can, it's, it's a little bit easier to be nicer to your spouse and children uh, people you know it's nice it's easier to be nice to people who are nice to you that's that's right <laughs> it is to those who irritates you yeah it's to those who rub you wrongly yeah and that 
that is, you know, how you're going to love this person. Yeah. And, you know, this also would then, you know, the words of Mother Teresa would come up. That you love to, it hurts. Yes. Because then it hurts to love this person. Yeah. And, and you try to love. And we are called to do that every yeah. day, actually. Yeah. In a sense. To die to ourselves. Die to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, Helena is... Uh, asking from off what, uh, WhatsApp and she says, I hear what you are saying about having to balance things and speaking when there's an opportunity to speak. But what about creating opportunities to speak about things that matter? Well, if you have the forum, mm. create. Right. And I think sometimes the church also has to create the forum. Mm. Yes. And, and I think the church has, in certain ways, in, in, in certain circles. Yes. Right? Um, but again, I suppose um, it's how we respond yes. as church, right? And as individuals as well. Mm -hmm. you, nowadays, it's not really, there, there's not much of uh, news about the church going to some select committee mm. within parliament and all. But the church does that. Yes. When there's an opportunity. Yes. Yes. And so sometimes we don't hear, but you know, we are doing what Correct. we can. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually on the select committee for <laughs> Bofma. <laughs> but you're right. And mm. they, they do give us opportunities. They do give us opportunities. To, but To present our side of yeah. you know, the, the argument. Okay. But most of us won't hear about it. Yes. That's the, that's, that's the downside. But we should now and then, uh, I guess what she's saying also, is, and I believe so, is that now and then we also need to drum up. And I think so. Many a time, a lot of people don't know what the church is doing. Mm -hmm. In its own quiet way, you know, it yeah, tries just, to, to do things. Uh, without, as you said, drumming up, mm. you know, any uh, hype. Um, I, I guess for some things, we can drum up a little bit, I mm. guess. Yeah, like maybe, I mean, like the celebration of Catholic 200 SG. I mean, so like this now, we are, we are, we are trying to, to bring things to the forefront. Yes. But I guess the church also has to sit down and every now, when, when things happen, we need to stop and we need to say, what is our response? Mm. Yeah. Because what is, our good, what, what is our response going to be for the next 200 years? Yeah. That is something that we really have to sit down, sit and, down reflect, and, and reflect. And this is what this time is for. Yes. All about. Okay. Uh, Audrey is saying uh, from Off WhatsApp, she says, St. Paul advocates action of the individual for communal good over self. What can parishes do to transform I am Catholic to we are Catholic? Well, the churches, I guess, they, well, first thing, it depends on the parish priests and all that. But the, the way, as I see, that we are heading towards mm -hmm. Is, is now less of an individual person coming to church and doing your own thing. And where the church is heading towards now, and if you, if you see, we are talking a little bit more about communities. And so it is no more just me and God, me as Catholic, but now it is us. Ah, yes. We are in this together. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the community gathers together. It is so, yeah. Even the the way we we do mass now, we celebrate mass now. Yeah. It's gone past the the Vatic, pre Vatican way where you go and pray your own rosary and all that. But it's a communal celebration. Yeah. And so even the church now in Singapore, as I see it, we are also moving towards building communities. Mm. And I think that's important. 
Absolutely. Because it is in the, as, 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 I, as we said earlier, it is in the communities that we get support. Yes. It is in the communities that we are nourished. It's in, it's in the communities that we, we give expression of our faith. Correct. And the community is the church. Yeah. Right? Last question, Father, from Ben of WhatsApp. Father Adrian, besides prayer, faith, and many more doing missions in foreign land, uh, which I am now in, uh, this person is in the Philippines, by the way, how can we stay on course and not give up when the going gets tough? Well, when the going gets tough, it's not just the tough gets going, but yeah. <laughs> but for us, I think there are, there are a few things that we we should be re thinking about and remembering, and that is one. What is important one is prayer. Mm. Our relationship with God and our our prayer life supports us. That's where we get the nourishment and the strength to do what we need to do. So without prayer, then, you know, everything just seems... Porous. Porous. No, no strength. There's no nothing to grasp yeah, absolutely. on. Absolutely, no foundation. No foundation. So, prayer is one. And the other, I think, is you have to try to remember why you got into this. Mm. Yeah. What's your call? Why did God call you to do this? Or why did you respond? And with that, you know, when, when things get tough and you try to remember, okay, this is why I'm in this. Yeah. It helps. You know, God has called me to do this. Correct. I think, you know, it's, it's the same thing, right? For your own vocation, for instance, mm -hmm. there must have been times where, you know, you've, had to ask yourself very difficult questions. Yes. Right? Yes. Some people think, you know, the seminary is a nice, smooth, easy thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or for, the, for that matter, the priesthood, you know. Um, there are times where we feel that we want to give up. Yeah. And Thank you are, for being honest, Father. Yeah. So what do you do? We, we, we pray. We, we turn to the Lord. Yeah. And for me, as I said, that's why I give the the, the advice to to say why do you go into it? It's right. me remembering why I go why I became a priest. Yeah. The reasons why I gave up my life. And, and sometimes, and you we talked about the community, sometimes we forget ourselves. It's the community that helps us helps to remind us as well. The community helps to spur you on. And it is the community that sometimes open your eyes again and say, this is why I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On that note, Ben, thank you so much. And we, those are all the questions we're going to take, Father. So, so my dear brothers and sisters, we've been discussing and reflecting on the unseen good. Uh, is the Catholic Church impactful and relevant today? And from what we've discussed, the Church still is going to be impactful and relevant uh, even as we move on maybe and as we look forward to the next yes. 200 years father um father before we end uh first of all i want to thank you so much for, My pleasure. for being with us uh, this evening and sharing the time i know how busy you are <laughs> <laughs> also uh just for our listeners um, join us again in two weeks time we are going to have Father Eugene Vaz and uh, he'll be speaking about raising a Catholic family in a changing Singapore that is going to be another whole gamut of, of things to, to discuss about and uh, that's on the 8th of July so we hope you can join us then as well. Father before I let you go uh, could you please uh, let me invite you to pray uh, with me uh, and for our listeners uh, the Catholic SG 200 prayer. Sure. So, can we begin with the Lord's name? So we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son commissioned his apostles to bring the Gospels to the ends of the earth. 
our found founding missionaries left home and country so that we in Singapore may and your loving salvation. Thank you for, the, for this gift of faith and for all those who labor to keep it alive and burning these 200 years. Lord Jesus, our faith is in danger of becoming irrelevant because of secularism, materialism, individualism, and relativism. Grant our communities a renewed missionary zeal and courage to proclaim your name and lordship. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, to renew your people with the conviction and courage of our earthly missionaries. Rekindle our faith so that we can be beacons of light in a world darkened by sin, hopelessness and ignorance. Protect us from the snare of the evil one and grant us the grace to remain faithful to you. May our families be models of love and unity, our workplaces be sanctuaries for justice and integrity. Truth and charity be taught in our classrooms. Parishes live out their mission in communion. The poor, sick and abandoned see the face of God in us. And may peace and harmony reign among peoples of every race, language and religion in our land. Bless Mother, you were the first disciple and evangelizer to announce Jesus as Saviour to the world. Intercede and grant us your maternal guidance and protection as we navigate the uncertain future. Father, may your love and grace ignite our hearts and lead us to launch a new era of faith so that we may once again be a more vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Your blessing, Father, if you don't mind. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So thank you once again, Father, for joining us. My pleasure. Us. And for all of you who have stayed with us until this time, thank you so much. Uh, we want to apologize. Initially, we had a little bit of a technical issue, but we thank you for, for being with us. And hopefully this discussion, uh, you know, will again, maybe conscientize, maybe uh, get you to think a little bit more about how we can really truly be church in Singapore. Thank you very much. I'm Andre Acha. Have a blessed night. God bless. Your mix of prayer, music, and faith-based conversations. Catholic SG Radio.